this. Good morning. Good morning. God is good. All the time. All the time. Amen. 
Amen. Announcement. It's okay. Julie. The fashion show. I'm looking for some men to model the men's clothes. I have children and I have women, but I have men. Okay, all you men out there, we need models for the fashion show. Okay. <laughs> we got we got Jeff and we got Chris here. All right. Models for the fashion show. Yes, Robin. Jeff's birthday was yesterday. That's right. Happy birthday to you, Jeff. Thank you. Happy birthday. A, a new decade, I hear. What, 39 today? 39? Well, happy birthday to you, too. Happy birthday. Speaking of birthdays, tomorrow is Sarah Kugel's birthday. Yes, um, yes. As you said, I want to say my mm -hmm. Sarah yes. She is um, now in the senior living situation. And so if you can shower her with cards this week, even if they're late, it'll be a way for her. Thank you, Nancy. Yeah, Sarah Kugel is an assistant living now. She's at Paramount. Okay, Paramount. Any other announcements? Thomas has one. Thomas. <laughs> oh, um, Monday we'll be celebrating our anniversary. Well, happy anniversary. <laughs> she she kind of put you under the spot, didn't she, Thomas? <laughs> <laughs> so how long have you had to put up with me? 104 years. 104 years. We got married young. It feels like 104. <laughs> oh. I, 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 I'm sorry. You didn't have to answer that. <laughs> Congratulations. Any other announcement? I have a testimony. If Go I can get through it. Okay. Go ahead. Um, my grandson was in a bad car accident last Sunday. That's why we weren't here. He swerved to miss a deer and he hit a tree and two parked cars. And he ended up having a baseball hat on that had a Bible verse and we didn't know it till the next day. And that Bible verse, he came to me and he said, Graham, look, there's a Bible verse in this hat. And it was Joshua 1 9. That number nine is the number that his dad has always used for baseball, football, and when I did prison ministry, the number nine always came up. And so I'd like to read Joshua 1 9. Absolutely. Do not be afraid. Oh, some spot. Have I not commended you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord God will be with you wherever you go. And I feel God was with him. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony, Julie. It always gives me chills to know when God has done something and you know it was there. Yeah, he could have been severely injured. Yes. I should have been planning a funeral this week. Yes. Thank you. Any others? Did y'all get your newsletter? We've had a lot of issues the last two weeks with the office computer. But anyhow, there are hard copies on the back. So if you didn't get your email with your newsletter, pick up a hard copy. There are hard copies in the narthex of the newsletter. And also, I'm going to pass around this one more time. Probably getting tired of looking at it.
but the 2020 directory, every week that we've passed this around, there's been at least one correction. So we're going to have to stop passing around soon, but one more time, check your address, your phone number, your email, and all that good information. Make sure it's correct. And birthdays. And birthdays. Yes. And, yes, your and, birthday is not on the back. and birthday, too. <laughs> now that now that you're 60. <coughs> Are there any other announcements? Does it yeah, oh yes. Well, congratulations. That's awesome. You know, she tried for over a year, so they are fantastic. That's awesome news. You look way too young to be a great grandmother. I knew I'd like to. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Any others? Jeff? So, uh, Kim became a mom for the first time today. 22 years ago. Today's Jessica's birthday. But uh, so we've really been blessed. And part of a prayer request on that is that uh, uh, Jesse, uh, yeah. Jesse, uh, uh, anybody doesn't know that? Uh, so Jessica told us that she's uh, pregnant again. Uh, so uh, she'll be due in July. Uh, this, July. So this will be her sixth uh, child. So just pray for that, that baby, that everything will go well. Um, also, um, you know, sometimes, well, I'll just put it this way. People would always say, you're pregnant again, you know. So um, we had six kids, um, and Jessie, this will be her sixth. But I know two, uh, two young ladies who desperately would love to be pregnant and aren't. So just pray for those who want to be. Um, uh, but uh, I know that just... A, really a disappointment when you want to get, like you're saying, they tried for a while. For someone who's trying to get pregnant and is having trouble getting pregnant, so I just keep those in prayer and uh, want that to happen. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Well, congratulations on, on yes. your incoming. Grandparents, grandparents again. Grandparents again. 11, number 11? Okay. I just want to say I'm happy to see you, Russell. It's fabulous. Yeah. I'm up here on that drum kit and I look out and I see him listening and Ted and looks like rock and roll inside. Glad to see you back. Glad to see you back. Yeah. Glad you're back, Russ. Well, Good Jeff, to see you. We got, Jeff, we have 14 grandkids, so you're catching up. All right. You have 14. But everybody's too great. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully you don't want to be great to great kids for a while. Yeah. <laughs> not, not right now. Any others? Any joys or concerns? Joys or concerns? No? Uh, a couple in the first service I just want to mention to you. Lisa Twig. Uh, Lisa Twig fell and hurt her knee. So please keep Lisa in your prayers. Uh, I guess that was the... And Eileen. Eileen. Oh, right. Eileen hurt her Eileen ankle. Eileen just said she had, she had had surgery on the previous... Yeah, Eileen. And that's uh, Willard, right? Willard. Willard. Okay, Eileen Willard. So please keep those folks in your prayers too. Yes. I know the William, uh, the young gentleman we asked for prayers for a couple weeks ago, he's slowly progressing, he's been taking off speed tubes and he's intubated and they're looking to move him to a big house. Okay, what was his name again? It's William. William? William. William? William. William, I'm sorry. Don't hear too, hear too well up here. William. Okay. 
Thank you. Any others? Let's go to Lord in Prayer. Uh, one more. Oh, yeah, one more. Yes, Tommy. Uh, Sherry Miller. Sherry Miller. I did a Cairo's prison ministry with her husband. She's been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Oh. Um, Brooke, who usually sings with us, is uh, I'm not feeling well right now. Okay. Her uh, baby's doing what? March? Brooke? I think it's March. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> March. <laughs> yeah, March. Okay. Any others? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, it's good to be in the house of the Lord today, and uh, we thank you for that. The awesome privilege we have week after week after week. And we thank you for the many good things as we prepare for the um, for the closed closet um, fashion show. Uh, we ask that uh, that may be a blessing to all of us, Lord. And we thank you for the many, many people who work and volunteer in the closed closet to make that awesome ministry possible. Lord, we... Um, we lift up Brooke. She's not feeling well, and we ask her Holy Spirit be upon her and pray that she's feeling better. And also uh, lift up to her and that everything continues to go well with her pregnancy. We also lift up Jessica, who's uh, pregnant. Uh, that's good news. We ask to be with her and pray that everything goes well uh, for her and the baby. And we also say a special prayer for those who want to have a child and who, who seem to not be able to. And we lift up those that, that you may bless them with the possibility of a child. Lord, we lift up William, who's the rehab center. We ask your Holy Spirit upon him and provide healing, continued healing in his physical body. And Sherry, I lift up to you for cancer. May your Holy Spirit be upon her and provide her with the healing that she needs. We lift up Eileen uh, Williard uh, as she's recovering from her surgery. We pray that she's back up on her feet soon, and we ask your Holy Spirit to be upon her. For Lisa Twig that fell and hurt her knee, we ask your Holy Spirit to be upon her and provide her healing that she can be back up and about and moving around. We also pray for Siri Kugel as she's now living in assisted living. It's a big transition, and we ask your Holy Spirit to be with her as she, as she goes into this new environment. Lord, we lift up these and others. We're glad that Larry, um, Larry is with us this morning, Larry Kaiser. We ask that you be with him for a continued um, healing in his shoulder. We're glad that he's with us this morning. Lord, we lift up uh, prayers for any others that are on our minds for physical, mental, spiritual, and emotional healing. And we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. You taught us to pray by saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. search engine or whatever, uh, you know, in the Bible, you know, and we are called uh, to be that light uh, into the world as well. Uh, Jesus said, while, I'm this, you know, why, while I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Then he said, you are the light of the world. Um, so um, that's the message is that we, we have to 
not only follow his light, but be his light uh, to those who, uh, who don't know uh, who don't, who know, don't know Jesus, so for those who walk in darkness. So uh, uh, we'll be singing some songs about that this morning. But uh, it's good to be in the house of the Lord, isn't it? So we're going to sing a song called the House of the Lord. So uh, let's uh, stand and sing. <coughs> so.
Our text from the Hebrew Bible, our Old Testament, is from 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles, chapter 7, verse 14. And our Pew Bible is on page 350. 2 Chronicles, chapter 7, verse 14. If my people who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. And from our gospel, the gospel of Matthew, we're going to look at chapter 5, starting at verse 13. 
And that's on page 786 in your pew Bible. Matthew chapter 5, starting at verse 13. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out, trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of the pen, will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the law. We thank you for the prophets. We thank you that you have called us into your service to be light, to be salt in our world. Help us to be salt and light in the world in which we live. Help me to be witnesses. Help us to lead others to you. And Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth and meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. And either through me or in spite of me, may your word speak to your people. In the name of the risen Christ, I pray. Amen. Because the medieval church was in serious trouble prior to the Reformation, those who really cared about the church put a list together. The list together was called Seven Deadly Sins. They made a list of seven deadly sins. And the people declared that these sins did more harm to the church internally than the invasion of the barbarians, which overthrew the Roman Empire, had done externally. That these sins were doing more harm internally to the church than what the barbarians did externally. What were these seven deadly sins? Well, here they are. Greed, sloth, pride, envy, anger, lust, and gluttony. Greed, sloth, pride, envy, anger, lust, gluttony. Today we're experiencing an uprising of all seven of these seven deadly sins in the world in which we live. So the, que the, the question is whether we, as followers of Jesus Christ, whether or not we, as God's people, are different. Are we different? Today, there's a growing number of people who have a preoccupation with self. And social media just, just makes it so much worse. People are always taking selfies, have a preoccupation with their self. And at the same time, there's a lack of concern for others. Social media is constantly tell us to look out for number one. Also, those who follow prosperity preachers or believe or teach in the prosperity gospel 
they too have a preoccupation with self. Because the prosperity gospel focuses on the reader instead of God. So if you're following a prosperity way of looking at the Bible, when you read a text, the focus is on you, not on God. And as a result, people are waiting for some type of material blessing to shower upon them instead of denying themselves, picking up their cross, and following Christ. Also, we see a growing number of people who live in bondage to fear. Fear of global warming. Fear of disease. Fear of violent crime, fear of nuclear war, fear of death. All these fears do terrible things to us. It limits us. We can't even function because we're afraid. We see things that are not there. We tend to be fearful because we place our faith in the wrong place. Society as a whole tends to place its faith in the government, medical science, our higher education institutions to help them overcome these fears. But that's not the answer. The answer to our fears of our day won't be solved by our government or our schools or our medical science or, or even, a prosper, even a prosperous economy. The only antidote for fear is a grounded faith in Jesus Christ. A faith not in ourselves, but in Christ and God. Also, we see a growing number of people today who have a total disregard for human life. Disregard for life is seen in the number of innocent people that are killed every day. Innocent people killed every day. Senseless violence. A disregard for life. A disregard for life. We see it in our movies. We see it in our, in our social media. We see it on our video games. And additionally, the amount, of, the amount of drug trafficking also tells us that life is cheap. Also, we experience a growing number of people today who have obsession with physical gratification, an obsession with sex. And this obsession with sex is responsible for the breakdown of the family. Today, less than 2% of men and women wait till they're married to have sex. Less than 2%. Think of what your grandparents, what that percentage might have been in your grandparents' generation and how that's changed so much. And what's the result? Half of our marriages end in divorce, half of our children are born out of wedlock, and 30% of all pregnancies end in abortion. Yet, our social media glorifies any type of sex outside of marriage, outside of any type of commitment, period. And I also want to mention there's a growing number of people today who reject Christianity, who reject any type of religious faith. They either reject religious faith altogether or they create their own God. They create their own God. There's no absolute truth. There's no ultimate truth. They say we live our own truth. We live our own truth. So there's no ultimate truth. The only thing that's intolerable is the lack of tolerance. In 1960, 63% of folks attended worship services regularly. Today, in 2023, only 22% of folks attend worship services regularly. It's dropped from 63% in 1960 to 22% in 2023. That is dramatic, folks. And all this says to me is that we're living in a nation where people are walking in darkness. They're lost. And they're driven to escape the pain of their losses, the pain of reality. Young and old, men and women are disillusioned, dissatisfied with life. 
So they're trying to seek a new experience, something that would give them an ultimate thrill, that extra something to bring them meaning in life and fulfill their emptiness within. Yet we know that the only solution to the emptiness within is a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. The Ten Commandments, teachings of Jesus Christ, they never go out of date. I mentioned the danger of prosperity preachers, the danger of prosperity Christianity. And that's one landmine that people fall into. And there's another landmine that people fall in today, and that's progressive Christianity. Progressive Christianity tends to do away with the concept of personal sin. And by doing so, it destroys the Judeo-Christian heritage. The Jewish sacrificial system, our, our Judeo-Christian faith, was based upon the Judeo-Christian sacrificial system. It's built on the atonement of sin. Built on the atonement of sin through the sacrifice of animals. Christianity is founded on belief that Jesus is the Messiah, the Lamb of God, who was without sin, who was crucified for the sins of the world. Through his blood, we are saved by grace through faith. So, by removing sin, you're actually destroying our Judeo-Christian heritage. Every time we celebrate Holy Communion together, we are affirming that Christ gave his body, gave his blood for the forgiveness of sin. So you can't remove the concept of sin without taking a wrecking ball to Christian theology. God loves everyone. Yes, that's true. God loves everyone. But God is also holy. God is also just. So there has to be judgment. But the good news of the gospel is through repentance and confession of sin, God will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There are too many folks today that try to tell us that the old rules don't apply anymore. Let's throw them all out and start all over again. Also, there are folks who say it doesn't matter what you do. They believe that all values are relative, that there is no absolute truth. It is in today's gospel lesson that Jesus corrects that mistaken notion. For Jesus says, do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. Then Jesus goes on and tells his followers that they are salt and light in the world. Salt and light. Alone salt and light are useless, but when combined with other things, they can be fruitful and productive. Salt gives taste to very bland food. Light gives vision and illuminates all that it surrounds. Jesus is saying that those who follow him are to be salt. All to be light in the world. So Jesus is saying, yes, it does matter. Yes, it does matter what we do. Because it determines who we are as children of God. As Christians, we are to be followers of Jesus Christ. Therefore, we are supposed to be the salt and the light in our world today. We have received light. The light of the gospel. And God tells us to let it shine out into the world. For our text says, You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it on a basket. But on a stand. And it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, Jesus is saying, Let your light shine before others. So that they may see your good works. And glorify your God in heaven. So don't hide your Christian life. Let it shine. Let the world know that we are Christians. Let the world know who it is that gives us light. We are to let our light shine before others so that they may see our good works and give glory to our Father who is in heaven.
The goal is for people to see the difference in you. The goal is for people to see the difference in me. And what Christ has done for us. We are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. Let it be so. Let it be so. Amen. I'd like to continue with uh, a prayer. If there's anybody watching that has not received Christ into their hearts, let us um, please join me in this uh, prayer, please. Dear Heavenly Father, I realize I'm a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe that your son, Jesus Christ, died on a cross for the forgiveness of my sin and you raised him from the dead. I want to make him my Lord, my Savior. Send your Holy Spirit into my life and help me to be the person you want me to be. Help me be salt and light in the world in which I live. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Oh, I always forget what's next. Um, I need a volunteer. Could I, maybe Chris? Okay. Thank you. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, remember how Jesus took the disciples in the upper room and he set them down and he took bread and gave thanks. And he gave the bread to the disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Eat of it as often as you will, remember it to me. And when the supper is over, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave the cup to the disciples and said, Take, drink, all of you. This is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of it as often as you will, and remember it to me. So when we eat of the bread and drink of the cup, remember your life, death, and resurrection, and we look forward to your coming again. Make this one with Christ, one with each other, one with Christians around the world until we gather together at your heavenly banquet. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. The body of Christ, broken for you. The blood of Christ, shed for you. I invite you to come forward as you feel led. The body of Christ, broken for you. The body of Christ, broken for you. The body of Christ, broken for you. The depressing, you're making new wine. In the full Thank you. 
God's love, grace, and peace be with us now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> 